The cast of the 1958 movie South Pacific was carefully selected through auditions and chemistry tests. For the role of Nellie Forbush, Mitzi Gaynor was chosen for her vibrant personality and singing talents. Rosano Brazzi was cast as Emile de Beck for his strong presence and romantic appeal. For the role of Bloody Mary, Juanita Hall impressed the casting directors with her powerful voice and acting skills. John Kerr's portrayal of Lieutenant Cable was considered perfect due to his youthful charm and acting ability. These pivotal moments in casting helped shape the iconic performances that defined the movie. The chemistry between the actors was also a crucial factor in the casting process, ensuring a cohesive and captivating ensemble. The casting decisions truly brought the characters of South Pacific to life on the big screen. The directorial vision behind the 1958 movie South Pacific was deeply rooted in authenticity and emotional storytelling. The director aimed to vividly portray the complexities of human relationships set against the backdrop of World War II. Drawing inspiration from real-life events, the director brought a sense of realism to the narrative emphasizing the impact of war on personal lives. In terms of style, the director favored grand, sweeping visuals to capture the beauty of the South Pacific setting. The use of vibrant colors and lush landscapes added to the immersive experience for the audience. The director also employed a mix of intimate close-ups and sweeping panoramic shots to convey the emotional depth of the characters and the vastness of the wartime setting. Collaborating closely with the cast and crew the director encouraged a deep exploration of each character's motivations and inner struggles. This collaborative approach allowed the actors to bring authenticity and depth to their performances, enhancing the overall emotional impact of the film. The director's vision, combined with the dedication of the cast and crew, resulted in a timeless classic that continues to resonate with audiences to this day. In 1958, a classic movie called South Pacific hit the screens. This film has many funny, shocking, and sad facts that you won't want to miss, so keep watching this video. Out of the various roles in this movie, which one was your favorite? Do you have a cherished memory associated with this film? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. During the making of the 1958 movie South Pacific, the set design was crucial. The film used stunning tropical island locations to bring the story to life, capturing the essence of the Pacific Islands. Logistically, filming in remote locations presented challenges, requiring the crew to transport equipment and personnel to these far-off places. Innovative techniques, like Technicolor cinematography, were employed to create vibrant visuals making the movie a colorful spectacle. The production showcased the beauty of the South Pacific while overcoming logistical obstacles to create a cinematic masterpiece. South Pacific, a classic musical film released in 1958, remains a timeless piece of cinema. Set on a tropical island during World War II, the movie delves into themes of love, war, and cultural differences. The stunning backdrop of the South Pacific Ocean provides a picturesque setting for the unfolding story. The film boasts a captivating soundtrack, including memorable songs that have become iconic within the realm of musical theater. The romantic plotline intertwines with historical context, offering viewers a glimpse into life during wartime. The characters are richly developed, each with their own struggles and aspirations adding depth to the narrative. Overall, South Pacific is a must-watch for those who appreciate a combination of dazzling visuals, heartfelt storytelling, and exceptional musical performances. The creation of the film's score and soundtrack for the 1958 movie South Pacific played a pivotal role in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone of the film. The composers and musicians involved in crafting the music for this classic worked diligently to ensure that every note resonated with the story's essence. Through the use of soaring melodies, intricate harmonies, and evocative orchestration, the music in the film effectively conveyed the emotions and themes of love, conflict, and culture present in South Pacific. Composers like Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein II, along with talented musicians, brought their expertise to create a soundtrack that seamlessly integrated with the on-screen action 
enhancing the viewer's experience and deepening fears. Emotional impact of the film, the music in South Pacific not only served as a background accompaniment, but also as a storytelling device, guiding the audience through the characters' journeys and underscoring key moments of drama, romance, and introspection. By paying close attention to the nuances of the film's plot and character development, the composers and musicians were able to compose music that not only complemented but elevated the narrative, adding layers of depth and meaning to the overall cinematic experience. Dot. Through the skillful blending of vocals, instrumentation, and thematic motifs, the soundtrack of South Pacific became an integral part of the film's identity, creating a lasting legacy that continues to captivate audiences to this day. The collaborative efforts of the composers and musicians involved in shaping the musical landscape of this classic masterpiece truly showcase the power of music to enrich storytelling and evoke profound emotional responses from viewers. Rosano Brazzi claimed to have sung his own vocals in this classic, though Giorgio Tazzi was credited as his singing voice. Bloody Mary's insistence on her daughter marrying the late Lieutenant Cable hinted at her pregnancy. Bali Hai earned the film a spot in the American Film Institute's list of top musical moments. Brazi's vocal prowess was eventually proven in the Christmas that almost wasn't. In the movie South Pacific, one iconic scene is the performance of the song Some Enchanted Evening by lead actor Rosano Brazi. The direction in this scene focuses on capturing the emotion and sincerity in Brazi's rendition, creating a moment that resonates with the audience. The cinematography enhances the intimacy of the scene, using close-ups to showcase Brazi's performance and convey the depth of his feelings. Brazi's performance, combined with the direction and cinematography, leaves a lasting impact on viewers, drawing them into the character's emotions and the overall story. Another standout scene is the Bali High sequence, known for its lush visuals and exotic locales. The cinematography plays a key role here, capturing the beauty of the landscape and setting the stage for a pivotal moment in the film. The direction emphasizes the mystery and allure of Bali High, drawing viewers into the enchanting world of the story. This scene showcases the film's grandeur and escapism, transporting the audience to a magical place far from reality. Reflecting on these scenes, director Joshua Logan expressed his vision for creating immersive experiences that transport viewers to the world of South Pacific. Brazi, in an interview, shared his approach to embodying his character and bringing authenticity to his performance, underscoring the emotional depth he aimed to convey. Through their combined efforts, the filmmakers and actors of South Pacific crafted unforgettable moments that continue to captivate audiences decades after the film's release. Concerned about representing the lush settings, the director introduced color filters, though they backfired. France Nguyen was absent from the film's 50th anniversary celebration. Joshua Logan deemed the filtered decision his biggest mistake, later revealed his satisfaction with their look on VHS. Some Enchanted Evening made the Afi's list of top movie music in 24. Released in 1958, the movie South Pacific had a significant cultural and social impact. Audiences were captivated by its portrayal of love, and racial tensions set against the backdrop of World War II. The film's music, especially the song Some Enchanted Evening, became iconic and influenced popular culture. South Pacific also sparked discussions on racism and stereotypes as it addressed themes like interracial relationships and prejudice. Overall, the movie resonated with viewers, leaving a lasting impression on society at the time. Following Billis's rescue from the sea, Captain Brackett claimed he cost the U.S. Navy 600000 Georgia appears in the opening credits, but is absent from the end credits. The film had an exceptional run at the Dominion Theatre in London, lasting nearly four and a half years from April 21, 1958, to September 30, 1962, setting a record that may never be surpassed. South Pacific, the 1958 film, received a warm critical reception with many reviewers praising its stunning visuals, 
powerful performances, and memorable music. Audiences were equally enthralled, captivated by the film's romance and dramatic storyline. The movie was nominated for three Academy Awards and won the Oscar for Best Sound. These accolades were a testament to the talent and hard work of everyone involved in the production, from the actors to the crew. Winning an Oscar not only signifies recognition for their efforts, but also boosts their professional reputation in the industry. Overall, the critical acclaim and awards for South Pacific validated the dedication and artistry of the entire team, cementing its status as a beloved classic in cinematic history. Based on a book of stories from World War II near the Coral Sea, South Pacific includes a tale about a rescue from Japanese forces. A memorable scene features Ed Fury, who would later star in action films. The movie was the highest grossing U.S. film in 1958. During the filming of the movie, lead actor Rosano Brazzi struggled with his singing parts, leading to frustration and additional coaching to improve. Mitzi Gaynor, who played the female lead, coped with a fear of water during the famous I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair scene, where she had to shampoo her hair in the ocean. The crew faced challenges dealing with the extreme heat and humidity on location in Hawaii, which sometimes affected equipment and caused delays in shooting. Despite these difficulties, the cast and crew worked together to create a memorable and beloved classic film that endures to this day. In this classic, more people were mimed and dubbed than those actually singing. Mitzi Gaynor sang herself while John Carr was dubbed by Bill Lee of the Mellow Men, known for dubbing stars in various films. Russ Brown, who played Captain Brackett, was 66 at the time, not over 50 as the character claimed. Rosano Brazzi, Kim Clark, and John Kerr's singing voices were substituted by Giorgio Tazzi, Thurl Ravenscroft, and Bill Lee, respectively. Captain Brackett takes offense at Lieutenant Cable's remarks on older men's virility. The movie South Pacific, released in 1958, holds a significant place in film history due to its groundbreaking use of Technicolor and location shooting in Hawaii. Its influence on future filmmaking can be seen in its grand production design and memorable musical numbers that set a standard for the musical genre. South Pacific inspired a wave of romantic musicals in the following years, contributing to the popularity of this genre in Hollywood. Its legacy lives on through its timeless songs, such as Some Enchanted Evening and Bali High, which continue to be performed and recognized today, keeping the spirit of this classic alive for new generations. Dating back to the development of the stage musical, Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein too were pressured to eliminate the song You've Gotta Be Carefully Taught. But they resisted. The movie faced objections and boycotts in certain areas because of this song. Hazel Rogers made her debut in the film. The original Broadway production of the show won 10 Tony Awards, making it the only musical to achieve wins in all four musical acting categories. No other play has managed this feat. Juanita Hall was the sole performer from the original Broadway production to reprise her role in the film adaptation. The act I finale and the final reprise of Dites Moy were combined on the soundtrack to create a longer track that ended with a reprise of Some Enchanted Evening. Both the show and the movie closed with the reprise of Dites Moy, followed by orchestral music. Interestingly, the book's author, James Meikener, and the music's writer, Oscar Hammerstein II, hailed from the same town Doylestown, Pennsylvania, but never crossed paths in their youth. The soundtrack album for the film was the first of its kind to be issued in stereo. The original cut of the film was 181 minutes long, but was never publicly shown. South Pacific won the Pulitzer Prize in Drama in 1950. In the making of this classic, the original Broadway star Juanita Hall was dubbed in the film version, replacing her own songs with Muriel Smith's vocals as Bloody Mary. Similarly, John Kerr's singing was dubbed by Bill Lee in this iconic film. Mary Martin did not reprise her role as Nellie Forbush, possibly due to casting challenges after the passing of her stage co-star. Mitzi Gaynor ultimately took on the role. These behind-the-scenes decisions helped shape the final production 
ensuring a memorable viewing experience for audiences. The scenes at Emil's plantation were filmed at what is now Princeville Resort, overlooking Hanalei Bay, Kauai. The movie partially restores the song Loneliness of Evening, which had been deleted from the stage version before opening in New York. The lyrics appear as a poem sent by Emile de Beck to Nellie Forbush. The full song was used in the 2001 television version. Additionally, the song was featured in the TV production of Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein II Cinderella in 1965. The use of color filters in the film was heavily criticized, with cameraman Leon Shamroy expressing his discontent to director Joshua Logan. Logan's response was that the film had been successful financially, so he wasn't too worried about the criticism. France Nguyen played Liat, a northern Vietnamese character in the film. This classic was Diane Dubois's final movie. Patty Page revealed in a book that she auditioned for Nellie Forbush's role, which eventually went to Mitzi Gaynor. Director Joshua Logan initially wanted Elizabeth Taylor for the part, but she was too intimidated to sing during auditions, even though she met with the creative team. Taylor later performed songs from the score for her husband, Mike Todd. The Broadway show South Pacific premiered in 1949 and had a successful run, scooping up several Tony Awards. Mary Martin and Ezio Pinza starred in the production, with Juanita Hall reprising her role in the movie adaptation. Interestingly, the French character Emile was played by Italian actors in both the Broadway show and the film Ezio Pinza and Rossano Brasi, respectively. Fernando Lamas was also considered for the part of Emile, but couldn't break free from his commitments to another Broadway play. The film, South Pacific, is a unique theatrical adaptation of a Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein two stage show as it retains all the songs from the original play, including My Girl Back Home. In 2002, it was nominated by the American Film Institute as one of 400 movies for the top 100 America's greatest love stories. Fun Fact The opening notes of Bali H.I. form a perfect octave similar to Somewhere Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz. The final film of Beverly Johnson was a significant moment in her career. France Nguyen, who portrayed Liet, relied on her fluency in French to communicate with co-star Rossano Brasi. Joshua Logan sought numerous top actresses, including Judy Garland, Elizabeth Taylor, Doris Day, Audrey Hepburn, and Ginger Rogers for the role of Nellie Forbush. These casting choices and language dynamics added depth to the film. Juanita Hall, an African-American actress, portrayed the Polynesian character Bloody Mary in the movie, reprising her role from the Broadway show. In another film, she would play a Chinese woman. France Nguyen landed her role in the film through an introduction by Candy Jones, leading to discussions about appearing in the director's next project. Some scenes in the movie were reportedly filmed in a village on the island of Ibiza with the outdoor locations resembling the village's bays. If you have vivid memories or experiences tied to the 1958 movie South Pacific, we invite you to share how this classic impacted your personal journey and shaped your views on cinema. Your reflections could spark engaging discussions and foster a deeper appreciation for this iconic film. Let's celebrate the power of storytelling and the magic of cinema together. Remember, your voices matter. So join the conversation by commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing for more enriching cinematic explorations. Let's embark on this nostalgic voyage together and relive the timeless charm of South